the story starts, and the first thing that grabs our attention is this flower store. While we are checking out these vibrant sunflowers, we catch someone in the background whining. As the scene shifts, we spot a dude with a blue head deep into his study session. Judging by his expression, it seems like this goofball is done with studying not because he mastered everything, but because he cannot get himself into it. Just then, a lady chimes in and picks up an empty bowl from the table. Apparently, the five minutes since Junior cracked open a book have been an epic saga of procrastination and existential angst. She launches into a well-worn tirade about the neighbor's daughter, a studious specter who haunts the noon with extra classes, while her own offspring wallows in self-pity and fricking around. Now, she is even more furious and straight up tells him that the least he can contribute to his existence is by helping out in the store. She instructs him to hang those hanging baskets on the rack and reminds him to tie the rope securely. After all, a stronger wind might just decide to play Jenga with the hanging baskets. He gets straight to business. While not catching the whiff of the situation, he asks his mom, these plants just need some water and sunlight. They are so easy to take care of, why do we have to move them around? At this point, the dude is going through existential dread, wondering if he could only be a chill plant with the sole job of basking under the sun, drinking water, and just growing. Deep in his philosophical mumbo-jumbo, his mother starts yelling at him, expressing how useless he seems to be. She immediately tells him to step down before he messes things up even more. With fire in her eyes, mom goes on a rant, questioning not just his choices but his entire existence. She is dropping wisdom bombs about inheriting traits, and this dude seems to have inherited the art of slacking. She even throws shade at the idea of him being a chill plant, claiming his life would not improve, talk about crushing dreams. So here he is, wandering the city, still yawning like it is an Olympic sport. In his mind, he is composing a list of grievances against his mom, but the one thing this dude will not admit is that he is basically a sloth in human form. And just when you think the comedy of errors cannot get any better, fate plays its favorite card. The flowerpot is on a mission to escape this laziness-filled scene. It takes a leap, finding its mark with precision. Fate, with a twisted sense of humor, sets the stage for our dude's potential demise, all while he is mid-yawn. The flowerpot makes its dramatic entrance, blood splatters like a low-budget horror movie, and I cannot help but feel sympathy for the poor pot. It signed up for plant duties, not this lazy head's shenanigans. The crowd gathers around, witnessing the unfortunate demise of the dude courtesy of the rebellious flower pot. Just before he kicks the bucket, his entire miserable life starts flashing before his eyes, with the haunting echo of his mom calling him for dinner. Amidst the impending doom, he spots a sweet delight before him, feeling ecstatic like there is no tomorrow. With the gusto of a champion, he starts chowing down on the food, only to realize there is something off about it. Suddenly, he finds himself munching on dirt. Yeah, he totally deserves this. Now, his consciousness is stuck in a little bubble where he is talking to himself, wondering where the heck he is, feeling like his arms and legs are tied up. As he dramatically opens his eyes, the first thing that hits his squinting gaze is the radiant shine of the bright sun. Suddenly, he bursts out of the ground, transformed into the form of a flower, finally basking under the sunlight as if his dream came true. At this point, he is clueless, living in the moment, satisfied that he crawled out of the ground. But, a grim reality starts to sink in. His eyes get pale, and he begins looking around frantically, here and there. So, the dude's now sweating more than a marathon runner, giving himself the side eye like he just found out he is the punchline of a cosmic joke. He takes a look around, and guess what? He's not in Kansas anymore. No, he is smack dab in the middle of a green universe. The sun's throwing shade like there is no tomorrow, and he is not the star of this show. Turns out, he is just a supporting actor in the grand production of Grass the sequel. Now, he is a humble blade of grass in this never-ending lawn drama, and he is not thrilled about it. He's officially reached the point of fuming. I mean, how bad can it be? Well, according to him, it is grass level bad, and that is saying something. Taking a leap back into the archives of his past life, he vividly remembers the good old days, eating lunch, going to school, and then getting smacked by a flower pot from the heavens. Now, he is frustrated, thinking there was someone worse than him at hanging flowers on that planet. He recalls a moment when he declared to himself, I just want to be a plant, bask in the sun, drink water, and live the comfy life. Fast forward to now, and he is completely losing his marbles at the realization that he actually became what he wished for. Caught in the chaos of his own foliage, roots trapped in the soil, he is doing the only thing he can, crying and blaming God for listening to his absurd wish. In a moment of epiphany, he remembers those web novels where the reborn main characters get a fancy system and follow the path to becoming gods with overpowered abilities. Now, he is giving himself a side eye, wondering where the heck his system notification is. Standing among the plants, he starts screeching at the top of his leaves, calling out to the system like it is the latest celebrity he is trying to summon. As time flies by, turning day into night and night into day, the dude feels like he is just a bad joke no one want to laugh at. A whole week of calling out to the system, and nada. He's forced to accept the harsh reality. He is just an ordinary plant, not the reincarnation of a man-eating, ferocious plant. 
On the bright side, he realizes he is not just a mere blade of grass, but the downside is, he used to be a towering seven-foot dude and now he is just a lowly flower. But the silver lining is the ground he ended up in is top-notch, rich in nutrients, fragrant, and downright tasty. He might be a flower, but at least he is flourishing in style. But there is one thing, he finds himself surrounded by plants taller than him, and his eyes widen in disbelief. He calls out to these towering green giants, telling them to chill down and play fair, blocking all the sunshine like a bunch of overgrown bullies. In this moment, he flashes back to the past, remembering a similar scene in class where everyone was ahead of him. Realizing he had to make his own way, he starts forcing himself into the giant flowers, determined to soak up all that sweet bright light. The struggle is real, but finally, he is bathing under the bright sunlight having the day of his life. Suddenly, his eyes catch a silhouette of an animal, and as the scene zooms out, we discover this furry buddy is a wild horse. The dude is utterly stoked to see a wild horse, a rare sight, considering he never had the chance to visit a zoo in his previous life. His face lights up until the towering creature approaches, and he starts losing his composure, fearing this grass-eating companion might have other plants. The once pleasant fella now looks like a terrifying goat, a psychic of the devil himself. Just when our guy thinks he is done for, surprisingly, the goat's tongue delicately catches the grass hanging around him. Turns out, this creature is content with just a little munch. Our terrified fella is experiencing the conflicting emotions of impending doom and relief hitting him simultaneously, the fear of becoming a goat's snack and the joy of finally getting out of this plant predicament. He's relieved to discover that it only took one bite, and it seems the furry fella has no taste for flowers. But just when he thought he is in the clear, this four-legged companion decides it is time to take a dump. To add insult to injury, a stinky pile of dung materializes right before our little flower fella. Before he could suffocate to death from the odor, he turns to stone, realizing that this is where the soil's nutrition values are coming from. The realization hits him like a ton of manure, he has grown out of soaking in horse dumps, even though the black soil tastes delicious, earthy, and palatable. It's a rainbow puking moment as he grapples with the fact that he is now a connoisseur of eating shit. As we take a look at the pleasant scene where every flower is blooming, our little fella has also blossomed. However, as he swings his leaves around his mouth, he is bewildered by the tooth-like things in the center of his pistols. The neighboring flowers are giving him creepy looks, and he starts feeling like the odd one out in this green neighborhood. Finally, he looks at himself in the system window, revealing that he is one of the ugliest plants in this sea of greenery. Now, he is losing his metaphorical petals, realizing he is turned into a big mouth flower, flashing back to the retro Nintendo gaming days with his friends. He remembers playing Super Mario and encountering those same big mouth plants, Venus flytraps. It dawns on him that there is no mystery as to why the other plants are looking at him with scorn. He is standing out like a pile of dog shit in a bed of gold. But hold on, he is confused about where this mirror thing suddenly appeared from. It vanishes into thin air, and then a notification chimes in, revealing that the detected host has blossomed, entered the juvenile stage, and interestingly, the flower system is now activated automatically. Now, he is fired up and steaming out of his nostrils, is ecstatic to see the system he waited for has finally arrived. However, his excitement takes a nosedive as an unsettling character, a reincarnation of what seems like an odd combination of a creepy guy and a doll, appears. This bizarre revelation unfolds that this character is now the adorable system companion of our flower friend. Taking a peek at his profile card, the most striking detail is that he is a big mouth flower planted in alpaca dung, a mere chicken among flowers. His jaw practically hits the ground, realizing he is just an ordinary plant, and to add insult to injury, he is planted in alpaca dung. Another window chimes in, revealing that he has earned one. One evolution points for sunbathing for one minute, another one. One for additional sunbathing, one point for absorbing soil moisture, and one point for absorbing minerals from the soil. The dude is caught off guard, but his mood takes a 180 degree turn when he realizes these evolution points can be used to upgrade and enhance himself. The icing on the kick. They're stacking up with no real effort. Suddenly, being a flower does not seem so bad after all. While soaking up all those sweet evolution points, our flower buddy is over the moon, exuding a burst of cockiness that leaves nearby flowers slightly creeped out. He feels like he just stumbled upon the cheat code of life. The creepy companion chimes in once again, proudly picking his nose, asking if my man finally realizes how strong he is. To add to the revelation, he announces that our flower fella has acquired 100 evolution points and offers the choice to enhance one of the six core parts, flower, stem, leaves, roots, fruits, or seeds. With no hesitation, my man goes all in for strength, choosing to enhance his stem, dreaming of being tall and glorious. The system promptly spends all 100 evolution points. Immediately, the ground starts crackling as his stem begins to grow. Hilariously enough, he is only grown by zero, three meters, leaving other flowers staring at him as if he just inhaled some confidence-boosting copium. Reality sinks in, with 100 evolution points, he only went up by three millimeters. He calls out the system for being lousy, and the ponytail mud doll companion claims it is just the first upgrade, encouraging him to accumulate more points and enhance again. 
taking a glance around, he sighs in disappointment, surrounded by the tall mother flowers, realizing at this rate, surpassing them might be a tall order. Suddenly, a bee with a sharp attitude starts hovering around him casually, in a dejected tone. He politely requests the bee not to sting him, but the persistent insect keeps buzzing around. Frustration gets the best of him, and he starts fuming, swinging his roots to send the fly in another direction, shouting that he does not possess any nectar, so why is this little buzz itch bothering him? As fate would have it, the bee decides it is time to take a dive inside his mouth. His eyes widen in disbelief, and he starts losing his cool because, in his entire 17 years of a miserable life, he has never eaten raw food, let alone a feisty hornet. Before he can pull the bee out of his mouth, it takes a deeper dive and makes a spot into his belly. Surprisingly, he starts feeling that the bee does not taste funny. In fact, he likes it, just as he liked the taste of soil. The creepy companion chimes in once again, this time holding a treasure box. He congratulates our guy for completing the first diversion and hands him a blind box treasure chest, which requires a whopping 10,000 evolution points to open. A system window appears, revealing that devouring living creatures allows the host to obtain a blind box treasure chest. Using a certain number of evolution points to open the blind box could yield random rewards, like a large number of evolution points or the fusion of plant genes. Our dude finds the idea intriguing, acquiring anything just by devouring. However, fate seems to be playing dirty with him because even thinking about opening the treasure box requires 10,000 points, and he is only getting one point at a time. So, five days fly by, and during all these days, our man was working hard, sunbathing every day, absorbing water and nutrients from the soil. Now, after getting all exhausted, he finally reaches the pinnacle of his botanical efforts. The question remains, will it be enough to crack open that elusive treasure chest? Having accumulated the coveted 10,000 points, our confident flower buddy boldly commands the system to open the treasure, feeling like the god of gamblers has just entered the town. That creepy motherfucker leaps into the air and opens the treasure box, revealing a B-rank vines gene and the fusion part being the stem. Now comes the fusion part. Our clueless friend, imagining himself turning into a legendary tentacle monster, stares at the screen like he is decoding a secret message. Without much thought, he commands the system to go ahead with the fusion. A green light starts to shimmer around him, signaling the occurrence of a miracle. The system congratulates the boy for successfully fusing the vine gene. Now, our dude has become even cooler with shimmering eyes and newfound confidence. The system reveals that he can transform his stem into thick vines, using them to whip opponents or bind them in place. This upgrade not only buffed his strength but also boosted his cockiness to a million points. Finally, his roots are floating around like champion gymnasts, leaving the other flowers in awe as they witness this oddball gracefully hovering with his fluttering roots in the air. Now, he is all pumped up about his newfound abilities, with visions of future warfare in his head. He imagines creating vine tunnels to surprise attack opponents. He's particularly turned on by the idea of grabbing those stinky wasps the next time they come around, planning to humiliate them to the core. Just as he is reveling in his botanical glory, his attention is once again seized by a resounding buzzing voice. And it is another wasp. He then starts flaunting his roots into the air, swiftly attempting to grab the bee with his green, shimmering, brown roots, and he names this flashy technique lightning whip. But, it seems the bee wants to make a joke out of him, hovering just inches away from his deadly roots, which have reached their maximum extension. Now, he starts sweating, realizing his arms are too short to reach that mischievous insect. After this moment of humiliation, our dude decides to withdraw his roots and just let the bees come closer. As we take a closer look at the bee's face, it seems like this little troublemaker is practically rolling on the ground, laughing at the dude's miserable state. But, you know, our guy thinks he is the Einstein of the botanical world, waiting for the perfect moment to snatch that bee like a ninja. And there he goes, unleashing his lightning whip with all the confidence of a superhero. However, before his roots could reach the bee, the little bugger had already been snagged by someone else. Our dude is left utterly shocked, standing there like he just witnessed a plot twist in a bizarre nature documentary. Enter the motherfucker Gecko, holding the bee in his mouth and grinning like he just won the lottery. To further infuriate our dude, this Gecko is practically doing a victory dance with the stolen snack. But our man is having none of this snack-snagging nonsense. Fueled by a burning fury, he launches his roots into the air again and snags the lizard by its tail. Now, the poor creature is sweating bullets, clinging to the ground, realizing it is about to get a botanical beatdown. But our man is furious, he is not letting the gecko escape, especially after his food got stolen. In a hilarious turn of events, the gecko's tail snaps in half as our dude's root recoils back, directly slapping his own mouth. The poor gecko is running for its life, and in the midst of this chaos, our dude finally remembers that these crawling creatures have detachable tails up their sleeves. Shrugging it off, he tells himself it is better than nothing and casually throws the gecko tail into his mouth, ready to savor the taste of this unusual delight. However, much to his disappointment, nothing happens. He is practically feeling a bit sad now, realizing that the system did not even give him any hints. It seems like he can only get the chest reward by consuming complete living creatures. Scratching his head, he wonders why there are so few insects around. 
not even a single green-headed fly, but there are plenty of dung piles lying around. So, after breezing through another week, he finally gets his hands on a little beetle's crawling around. Without a second thought, he casually tosses it into his mouth like it is a crunchy snack. As soon as the beetle lands in his belly, a chest materializes, another one of those that, of course, requires another 10,000 points to open. The dude starts coughing out the beetle he just ate because he realizes it was a dung beetle, not the regular kind. Now, he is lamenting his fate, crying over being born above a pile of dung. Regardless, he commands the system to open the chest. The system guy appears, congratulating our buddy for scoring 20,000 evolution points. He's grappling with the fact that these dung beetles are only giving him evolution points, but he reassures himself it is better than nothing. If only he could obtain plant genes, whether from a large caterpillar or a green-headed fly, he would eat them right on the spot to show them who is the boss. The whining system starts acting up again, telling our guy that it is a flower system, not some bizarre eating system where the weirder the thing you eat, the better the results. Meanwhile, the timid lizard is back, casually crawling around our guy's territory. Seeing an opportunity, he prepares his lightning whip, determined to grab this tiny creature for a snack. With all the flair of a botanical ninja, he hurls his root with all his might. But wait, there is another attack coming from another direction. A flash of a lizard dashes through both of these attacks, and as the scene shifts, we see a freaking toad trying to snatch our buddy's snack. As the scene zooms out, we get the full picture. This toad is practically dino-sized compared to our young flower fella. Immediately, the giant toad lunges into the air toward our guy, who is screaming with his mouth agape in terror, looking at this colossal threat. How? This is where he realizes that this toad was just chasing down the lizard a while ago, and now it has decided to target him all of a sudden. So, with superhero energy, he cracks his whip against this toad like a pro, sending the giant creature crashing down to the ground. The toad regains its balance, signaling that the showdown is about to begin, our little flower fella versus the giant toad. Undeterred, he keeps spanking the toad with his roots left and right. However, the toad retaliates, using its long-ass tongue to grab our dude, attempting to snatch him out from the ground. With every passing moment, the toad tightens its grip, and our guy realizes that the toad is trying its best to uproot him. At this point, the dude is groaning in pain as he gets ripped apart from the ground. It dawns on him that in his past life, he used to take his anger out on wild flowers in the fields, and now he is feeling the pain they might have experienced. It's like a karmic punishment from the botanical heavens. As he is almost out of the ground, facing what seems like a game over, his eyes land on something else. There's this lizard hanging around above the toad, seemingly carefree. Upon closer inspection, the lizard is practically telling our dude to remain silent. Our guy, mouth agape in disbelief, wonders if all the animals here have such high intelligence. Suddenly, the lizard lunges into the air, positioning itself directly above the toad. It opens its jaw, revealing tiny but sharp and deadly teeth, and bites the toad's eyes, causing blood to splatter. The toad recoils in earth-shattering pain, falling back to the ground and creating a dust cloud in its wake. Our dude finally takes a sigh of relief, and now, the tables have turned. He makes use of his roots and immediately grabs the toad, who was caught off guard in the chaotic lizard intervention. And just like that, he picks up this bastard toad and starts slamming it here and there like it is no big deal. He's taking all his revenge from this toad, making it feel the same fear of death our man went through. At this point, the toad is half dead, literally unconscious, and he leaves the toad on the ground with a great thudding noise. But there is another surprise in store for our dude. This toad, after getting the beating of its life, is trying to run away. Our guy immediately extends his roots to grab it once again, but the toad has already ran out of his radius. He's practically fuming, totally pissed at the sight of the toad escaping, inches away from being the delightful snack that could have proven game-changing for him. Anyway, he is now feeling all sad because he knows this is the reality he has to face. He realizes that being a flower is tough, where the universe is doing its best to end his flowery existence. So, as our guy was going through an existential crisis, the lizard crawls in towards him. My man, clearly not wanting a lizard at the party, asks if it is here to ask for forgiveness since it was the one who brought the toad here. Suddenly, the lizard picks up a pile of dung in her hands and starts placing it into our guy's roots. At this point, the dude is shocked once again to see that this little rascal is actually quite clever. It even knows about all the photosynthesis stuff. Now, the lizard gives him a delightful smile and a gesture of gratitude, while our man is busy smirking like a devil, clearly harboring ill intentions against this little fella. While the lizard is doing a happy dance after having made a friend, the dude realizes that this lizard seems to understand his words. Heck, it even understands how to use the environment against enemies and help the flower repot. In the midst of this linguistic confusion, our dude is pondering whether he is conversing in human, flower, or animal tongue. The lizard, with its cryptic silence, leaves him dumbfounded. He's left sighing in disappointment, thinking he had finally found a buddy to shoot the breeze with, only to see it slink away without so much as a goodbye. But hold your botanical horses. As he squints his eyes, he notices the lizard up to something sneaky. It's on a bug hunting mission. 
the lizard returns, mouth stuffed with crunchy critters, and extends its tongue towards our fella, who is now in full panic mode, wondering what on earth is happening. Amidst his complaints about saliva splatter, the lizard's like, dude, just try this bug. And our slow on the uptake hero needs some serious finger-pointing guidance to get the hint. Well, our dude is now caught in the dilemma of being offered a beetle from a lizard's mouth, and the confusion is palpable. The lizard, in its sweet innocence, is all in for this act of generosity, while our idiot hero is still wrapping his roots around the absurdity of the situation. With mixed emotions, he hesitantly picks up the beetle and tosses it into his mouth like a seasoned champ. I guess when life turns you into a flower and a lizard offers you a bug, you just roll with it. So, the creepy doll just will not quit, offering chests like a game show host who never takes a break. Meanwhile, our flower buddy decides to bring in his new lizard pal into the decision-making process. You can almost hear the creepy doll grumbling in the background, thinking, what kind of nonsense is this? Picture that lizard staring back blankly, like it is contemplating the meaning of life while casually munching on bugs. Our flower friend, perhaps realizing he is dealing with a slightly less sophisticated companion, simplifies things with a yes or no question. The lizard responds with a nod, not an elaborate dance, just a simple nod. Finally, with the lizard's endorsement, my man tells this creepy doll to get back to the business baby. And what does our dude snack? A B-rank plant gene vine. Time to fuse that bad boy into the stem. The system, probably looking a bit miffed at the inclusion of the lizard in this decision, throws in some details about this climbing plant. What are your greasy stems? Well, that is an interesting combo. The dude, now fueled with enthusiasm, slams that fuse button like he is the hero in a video game about to level up. Also, high fives for his new lizard friend, after all, it did indirectly gift him this genetic jackpot. Now, as the system gears up to showcase its magic, the dude's mind is already racing with strategic possibilities. He ponders the importance of having more vines, especially when faced with life's unexpected toad-related challenges. Our little creepy doll, probably realizing it has an audience, puts on a show. Right on cue the green energy starts shimmering around him, making our dude look like he is getting a photosynthesis-powered upgrade. The system cheers him on for successfully fusing that vine gene right into the stem. Now, he is throwing a bit of a tantrum, his roots did not get the size combo he wanted. He's giving the system a look that says, really, is this the best you can do? But our creepy system buddy, unfazed and probably picking its nose again, explains that there are no shortcuts in the world of evolving plants. The dude looks unimpressed, but you know, arguing with a creepy doll might not be the best use of his photosynthesis energy. Anyway, he shifts gears, turns to his lizard friend with a beaming smile, and starts appreciating the little lizard's genius move, giving him a bug snack and helping fend off the big bully toad. Now, with the charm turned up to max, he is offering a deal, you scratch my metaphorical back by catching bugs for me, and I will be your green, photosynthesizing knight whenever danger comes knocking. He is plotting some clever green schemes, realizing that having a mobile partner like little yellow fetching bugs for him can speed up his leveling game. And it seems like this little fella is catching on to the plan, even if he is not fully sold on it yet. Our flower friend spins a little tail, pitching the idea that the faster he levels up, the more protection he can provide. It's a bit of a hard sell, but hey, desperate times call for desperate photosynthesis. Eventually, Little Yellow reluctantly nods along, probably realizing he does not have many other options. With that settled, our dude christens his new buddy Little Yellow, a fitting name, considering the lizard's up color scheme. But the lizard does not seem too thrilled about it. But my man is not having any of it. He fires back, reminding Little Yellow that it is not his fault he has a poop-colored appearance. Plus, he has got a bragging streak a mile wide, boasting about his genius level intelligence back in his high school days, emphasizing that this name is perfect. Days fly by like a breeze, and our dude's getting notifications left and right from the system. This time, it is about snagging a B-rank Kang or plant gene. That sounds like some serious botanical business. The system asks him, hey, wanna fuse this bad boy into your seed? And our flower friend immediately says, heck yeah. With little yellow by his side, life's suddenly looking a lot greener. In just a few days, they have unlocked a new plant gene, talk about efficiency. But now our dude's scratching his head, wondering how he is gonna use this kanger gene if it is fused into his seat. Now, the creepy doll enters the scene, waving its magical stick like it is casting spells left and right. With another round of green light show, and our boy's feeling beefed up again. But he's got questions, mainly about how he is supposed to spit out Kanger without slicing his throat in the process. The creepy doll's got all the answers, assuring him it will not be a throat-slitting situation. All he has got to do is open wide, make a retching sound, and voila. Out comes the Kanger, just like picking your nose. So our dude sticks out his tongue, which is already a sight to behold, and then he opens his mouth even wider. And the next thing you know, he is shooting out these cactus-like balls in every direction. He admits it is not throat-slashing pain, but it still stings like hell. But this creepy doll, being the chill dude it is, casually brushes off his concern, dropping some wisdom like, Great powers come at a cost, man. Then, just for kicks, it suggests giving the power of Kanger a try, because why not, right? 
Now, he is all intrigued about these cactus balls that look surprisingly deadly. He's pondering whether grabbing onto them would be like a painful high five from nature. So, he decides to go for it, grabs one, and to his pleasant surprise, they do not hurt a bit. And it's all thanks to the chest, because his vines got tough and thick after a little upgrade. Now he is all pumped up to unleash his inner battery, and right on cue, a bold idea smacks him in the face. He turns to his lizard buddy, telling him to hold on to this dry life, and instructs him to stand at a safe distance. The little fella, with a puzzled expression, grabs the leaf, not bothering to question the goofball's motives. With a bit of reluctance and lingering doubts he grabs the leaf, thinking this dude must be cooking up some crazy stuff. But my man reassures him, stop sulking around. I am not here to hurt or trick you. Sure enough the little guy stands afar with the leaf in his hand. Now, with craziness all over his face, he prepares to throw a deadly whip at the little fella. He sends the cactus-like ball hurtling toward our dude with sheer force. On the other hand, the little lizard is pleasantly holding the leaf, as if he is having the time of his life. But, much to his surprise, instead of the cactus ball hitting the leaf, it directly smacks him on his tail. The little fella turns around only to find out his tail is now in pieces. Meanwhile, my man tries to play it cool, apologizing and admits his mistake, all while saying it was not intentional. The poor lizard is left utterly speechless, shooting our guy a side eye that screams, Dude, do you even have what it takes to be a man? Now, our flower friend is even more fired up, flames of rage engulfing him. He demands an explanation from the lizard, asking, why the contemptuous look? Maybe he is trying to act all superior or something. To prove his worth, this idiot decides to hurl another batch of cactus balls toward the little fella, not just one, but a whole bunch of them. Finally, one of the cactus balls manages to pierce through one of the leaves. But, to our guy's dismay, not a single one lands on that dry leaf the little lizard was holding onto. At this point, the little guy is seriously questioning his life choices, wondering why he ever befriended this flowery motherfucker. At this point, our flowery dude is feeling a twinge of humiliation, realizing not a single cactus ball landed on the target. But being the optimist he is, he reassures himself, it's okay. With diligent practice, I will surely improve. Fast forward a few days, and the first thing we witness is the lizard fellow effortlessly snagging bugs with its stinky tongue, like it is no big deal. Now, he has moved on to cracking open a dried tree and pouring water from the hollow tree stem into a bowl, which he clutches in his little sticky hands. With the bowl secured, he starts sprinting. Meanwhile, our dude is casually snacking on dung beetles, acting like it is just another day in the plant kingdom. It dawns on him that he has been eagerly waiting for the little fella's arrival to munch on some tasty delights. Just as he is pondering the lizard's whereabouts, something grabs his attention. He turns around to see the little fella descending towards him, bowl in hand, like a little obedient servant. Seeing the little naughty boy holding onto that bowl, he starts TP feel a twinge of delight. It's a joyous moment for him realizing the lizard caught on fast, now using a bowl for water instead of its previous water spitting routine. Now, siping into the delightful water, he feels thoroughly satisfied. And the little lizard, equally delighted, is basking in our dude's joy. However, one thing remains unchanged. The lizard still hunts down and stores insects in its mouth. And this flowery dude is not thrilled about it and suggests, Hey, next time you catch bugs, find some tree bark to put them in. It's more hygienic that way. Now, it is time for an eating spree for our idiot flower, and begins the munching. Of course, this little creepy gender bender creature makes its appearance once again, congratulating our guy for devouring a green-headed fly. While our dude is still staring at the system window in disbelief after this unexpected surprise, the system casually pops the question, wanna crack open that chest, buddy? But our dude, being the strategic thinker he is, decides to save that chest for a rainy day. Now, he is back solo with his lizard pal, whining and complaining to this little creature that this land is drier than his sense of humor. He suggests the little yellow buddy fetch some water to help the whole place thrive. As he juggles these responsibilities like a circus performer with too many balls, he is also casually sipping from a bowl of water. He leans back, takes a moment, and appreciates the bliss of being hand-fed by his tiny reptilian sidekick. He grins and admits, This is the laid-back life I have always dreamed of, where my lizard friend is my personal butler and hydration assistant. So, feeling all playful and quirky, our dude decides to resume his shooting practice. However, his aim is still as reliable as a chocolate teapot. Instead of hitting the leaves, his shots zoom dangerously close to our little lizard buddy, who is desperately trying to hold those dry leaves steady. Another barrage of cactus balls rains down, but none hit the mark. The dude casually shrugs off his incompetence, chugs down another insect snack, and casually mentions to his lizard friend, It's okay, buddy. Practice makes the man better, and I have got all my life for practicing. While ordering his little fella to gather up the scattered cactus balls, they notice someone sneakily observing them. Lo and behold, the big toad is back in action, baby. As the little fella casually gathers the cactus balls, the toad prepares to sneak up behind him. Our guy, in a panic, screams at the top of his lungs, warning his yellow buddy to look behind. Sadly, the frog makes use of its stinky long tongue and swiftly grabs the innocent lizard, who is innocently holding onto the cactus balls. Shockingly, the toad retracts its tongue, along with the tasty delight it just snagged. 
And just like that, the writers wrap up this little soldier's demise under the toad's belly. The flowery mother lover's eyes widen in disbelief. At this point, he is seething with anger and frustration, his eyes about to pop out from sheer fury. It's safe to say, the toad just hopped onto the dude's last nerve. Now, we are taking a peek inside the toad's slimy throat, where our little fella surprisingly is still alive, sweating bullets. He's scared to his core, trembling in fear as he anticipates taking a dive into the acidic abyss of the toad's belly. Suddenly, a light bulb flickers in his tiny lizard brain, and he immediately starts strategically placing those cactus balls around the toad's slimy throat. The toad, feeling something sketchy going on down its throat, starts sweating. It recoils in pain and begins spitting out tons. Eventually, the toad hurls out this little scared fella who just emerged from the literal depths of hell itself. Now, the idiotic flower's mouth is agape, pondering why the toad decided to spit his fella out. Is it because he tastes bad? It's a real head-scratcher for the flowery mastermind. The little lizard fella takes a leap into the air, escaping the toad's tongue. Our dumb genius, making wild assumptions from video game logic, speculates that the toad spat out the lizard out of repulsion after swallowing a farting bug. He also entertains the idea that toads eat something poisonous and regurgitate their stomach to clean it. He bursts into laughter, finally realizing it is because the little fellow was clutching those cactus balls, ensuring his survival. The little buddy comes running back on his puny feet, and the toad gives a Medusa-like glare and lunges into the air with its mouth wide open. Now, this guy is absolutely pissed at the toad's audacity to attack his underlings again. He vows that this toad motherfucker will not leave alive and whips his thick roots toward the toad with determination. But the toad hits the brakes immediately, grabbing our idiot dude's roots under its gigantic feet. In retaliation, it makes use of its own tongue, sending it hurtling down. However, something is amiss, and the toad looks stressed. As the scene zooms out, we see the toad's tongue has reached its elastic limit. It seems our man had a few buffs since their last confrontation, and he is well prepared for this moment. At this point, our flower guy is grinning like a maniac, questioning the toad's audacity for attempting the same trick twice. He mockingly asks the toad if it is slow on noticing the buffs. Making it painfully clear that he now has longer vines, the roots start to grab the toad tightly. With thicker and stronger roots, he begins dragging the toad closer to himself. The toad is sweating bullets, practically begging our maniac of an MC to stop this madness. But no, mercy is not on the menu, and our man makes sure to give the toad the ride of his life. He starts smashing him left and right like there is no tomorrow. The toad finally realizes that he is done for. Now, once again he is grinning like a maniac, holding the toad in the air. He makes it clear that there is no escape, even if the toad is pretending to play dead. The toad's fate is sealed. While the beaten up toad hangs in the air, my man decides to spice things up and throws a math problem at him. He asks, if you spit out five cactus balls every day, then how many cactus balls will you have spat out in total after ten days? The toad remains silent, utterly bewildered by what this maniac is on about. In response, our man tightens the grip of his roots even further, causing the toad to scream in agony. But he is having the time of his life, and he gleefully smashes the toad right into a pile of cactus balls. Yeah, it hurts, but that is how the writer decides to play out his fate. Now, he is even more pumped. His eyes are shimmering like he is about to go bonkers with his ultra instinct. So, for good measure, he throws down the toad, the cactus-loving critter, into the sea of cactus balls again. And let us not forget about our little fella. Debris is splattering left and right, cactus balls are flying into the air, and amidst all this chaos, the little buddy stands utterly terrified, witnessing a full-blown Goku vs. Vegeta level of fight. Now, keeping the toad hanging in the air, he casually asks if the toad does not feel like bouncing back this time. Feeling cocky about himself, he marvels at how he handled this big lizard fucker with ease, giving credit to his cactus balls for making it all possible. Getting into the spirit, he throws a part of the toad towards our little lizard buddy, encouraging his friend to join in the feast. Without hesitation, the lizard lunges at the juicy piece of meat. Our flower guy finds it surprisingly tasty too, and in the midst of the victory, he wonders if the system will give him a bonus for eating separately, considering he did not get a bonus for devouring his little friend's tail earlier. Much to his surprise, the gender bender cosmic joke appears again. But this time, he is back with two chests. Our dude is ecstatic, thrilled to see not one but two shiny chests heading his way. In his excitement, he questions the system. Wondering why he got nothing when he swallowed his little buddy's tail, yet now, after consuming only a few pieces of the big bullfrog, he is getting two boxes. At this point, the creepy mud doll clarifies that the system only rewards creatures killed and eaten by the host's own hands. For small creatures that the host can swallow in one go, there is a 100% chance of getting a box. However, for larger creatures that require chewing, there is a chance of getting a box, and it also depends on luck. The doll adds with a touch of dark humor that even if the host eats a whole toad, Bursting out his own stomach afterward, it might still only yield one box if luck is not on his side. Suddenly, another chest materializes out of nowhere, leaving the creepy mouth of the doll bewildered at the unexpected sight. On the other hand, our flower buddy is over the moon to see not one, not two, but three chests. It's as if fate has finally decided to take his hand. 
his eyes start shimmering at the prospect of having extremely heavy luck because he got three chests just by eating little pieces. However, the creepy doll tries to downplay our dude's luck, because why not? This gets our man fuming. He starts questioning the doll, demanding to know what it is trying to achieve and why it is suddenly getting jealous of his master out of nowhere. A bunch of moments later, we find both of them rolling on the ground, their bellies full to the point of almost puking after devouring the toad. However, the dude is fuming at the sight that the freaky doll was right. Even after eating to the point of his belly bursting, he still did not get another chest. The doll nonchalantly attributes it to the problem with his luck, brushing off any connection to the system. Our dude tries to play it cool, stating that he has no interest in opening boxes right now because there is still a lot to eat. His worry kicks in, realizing that leaving that big chunk of meat laying around will surely attract carnivores. In this very moment, his eyes start shimmering, and a light bulb flickers in his mind with a crazy idea. The wild idea that pops into his mind involves burying the toad into the ground to turn it into organic fertilizer. As we take a trip into his past, we see his mother burying fish near a tree. Being the goofball he is, he always asks his mother why she is burying the fish there. His mother reveals that microorganisms in the soil will decompose the fish body into carbon dioxide, water, and inorganic salt. A light bulb flickers in his mind as he realizes the same principle applies here. These substances can be absorbed and utilized by the fruit tree, making the tree more lush, and the fruits even tastier. But here comes the real kicker, the biggest challenge is still looming large. His mood takes a thoughtful turn as he figures out that his roots might need a little boost to dig deep into the ground. Now, he is clear on one thing, he can wrap tools with the vines to dig the soil. The key, however, is to find suitable tools. He starts wondering where he can find shovels, spades, and other necessary equipment. Certainly, he won't find them lying around in this unconventional landscape. So, he turns to his little buddy and instructs him to find thick branches and thin flat stones. So, our little buddy, all hyped up with the commands, dives headfirst into the mission and leaves the bewildered flowery ding-dong scratching its petals by not telling him where he is going. While on his stroll, he finally stumbles upon some sticks and a piece of a rock. Talk about nature's toolbox. Now, he is over the moon, thinking his first task is practically a walk in the park. But when he proudly presents his findings to his flowery buddy, instead of a pat on the leaf, he gets an earful. Turns out, these branches are too thin. They are practically breaking with just a little poke. Our flowery friend's disappointment is understandable. The soil demands sturdiness, and thin branches just will not cut it. At this point, the perplexed lizard buddy is staring at the mess he made, wondering why the things he brought look like they have been through a blender. With the energy of the flash, he sprints off in the opposite direction, determined to nail this task. Round one, he brings back a piece of dogtail grass, not exactly the construction material of legends. Round two, he proudly trots back with what he thinks is a chill rock, but it is a literal piece of shit. Now, he is huffing like he just ran a marathon till the moon and back. Third time's the charm, right. Finally, he manages to drag in a massive tree trunk that leaves our flowery friend dropping petals in utter shock. Who knew this little dude had it in him? But nope, he gets a slap of disappointment across his face once again. Turns out, he overestimated this little fella's intelligence. Just when the flower dude was ready to throw in the petals and admit defeat, his gaze falls upon a bone. But wait, that is not the star of this show, it is the arrow right beside it that steals the spotlight. His eyes widen in amazement at the discovery. Without a second thought, he snatches it up, and happiness starts to etch across his flowery face. Finally, he has something pointy now. This arrow even boasts good craftsmanship. Now, he is deep in contemplation, wondering if there are humanoid creatures on this continent or perhaps intelligent beings that use tools and work with metal. Now, our dude is all hyped up. His eyes are shimmering like the devil of craftsmanship just rolled into town. Not only does he pick up the arrow, but that seemingly useless bone is now in his hands, and he is ready to unleash its potential. He keeps a spare arrow for himself, tosses the bone to his lizard sidekick, and showers him with praise for his discoveries, and tells his buddy to let's get to work. Now, they're on full swing, digging into the ground like true champions. Each thudding sound resonates with the determination of two unlikely comrades on a mission. Amidst the digging, we catch a glimpse of the blue sky, because even intense digging needs a touch of scenic beauty. Finally, they pull off the trick, a full-fledged hole is now at their disposal. Both of them are huffing, and now it is time to drag the toad into their hard-earned hole. So, our little lizard buddy gets down to business, grabs the toad with its mouth, and starts pushing. After successfully plopping the toad into the hole and covering it up with dirt, the little fella begins a jumping routine on the curved mud, trying to make it as flat as a pancake. Meanwhile, the flower dude, channeling his inner detective, sniffs around for the scent of blood. Surprisingly, it is gone, eliminating the looming threat of attracting carnivores. In his moment of self-reflection, he realizes that there is nothing wild happening, it is just the usual point gaining. Impatience creeps in, and he figures maybe he needs to chill since it takes time for microorganisms to work their magic on the bullfrog body. With that mystery somewhat solved, he suddenly remembers the three chests he acquired and it is treasure time. 
because he has not even cracked those babies open yet. So, like some angel, that creepy motherfucker makes his nauseating appearance. It then asks its master if he would like to open the three chests. Now, with all its creepy cuteness, it adds an extra layer of unsettling charm to the whole scene. The master, not one to make decisions alone, turns to his little lizard fella for input. He asks the tiny reptile to pick a number from one to three. The little fella, overloaded with cuteness, chirps too. With that cleared up, the dude turns to the mud doll, gives it a nod, and orders it to open the second chest. Lo and behold, inside lies a B-rank plant thorn gene. This bad boy can be fused directly into the stem, and the system eagerly asks for permission to do so. Our man is over the moon, laughing wholeheartedly, and giving his little psychic a pat for the amazing luck. Of course, he agrees for the fusion process. So, the creepy motherfucker whips out the magic stick from his ass and starts working his enchantments. And just like that, our man is looking all badass, with thorn genes sprouting around him. Who knew opening chests could make you the coolest flower in the garden? Now, our man is grinning like a champ, sporting these terrifying roots equipped with deadly thorns. But oh boy, the little fella by his side is equally terrified at the sight of his friend turning into a thorn-covered nightmare. To test his new abilities, the flower buddy hurls one of the thorn roots into the sky, striking other plants around it. But, he is now sweating buckets, realizes the power he has just acquired is deadly enough to severely injure a toad with a direct hit. With two chests remaining, numbers one and three, he turns to his little lizard buddy once again for a pick. The tiny creature, still seemingly terrified and unable to speak, manages to chirp three once again. Both chests creak open, and to add salt to the injury, he only gets evolution points out of them. He sighs in disappointment at the abomination of rewards. But, in an attempt to lift his spirits, he reassures himself by reminding that his little buddy is still luckier than him. After all, he had opened ten blind boxes before and got absolutely nothing out of them. In the past few days, life for our flowery friend has taken a turn for the better with cactus balls, thorn vines, broken arrows, and bone spurs. He's starting to think being a plant is not as bad as he initially thought. In the next scene, amidst the lush greenery of the field, we catch our dude shouting at the little fella to run faster. As the scene zooms out, we discover the little dude is in a bit of a pickle, being chased by an ugly giant toad. Thinking on his prickly feet, the dude lures the toad into his radius and gets down to business with his thorn vines. He unleashes them toward the toad, grabbing it tightly and leaving the creature groaning in pain. With finesse, he smashes the toad into the ground so hard that debris scattered all around. After this intense showdown, it is time for the meat party. Both of them go on a munching spree like there is no tomorrow, savoring the taste of the toad's delightful meat. As part of the usual routine, the creepy dude chimes in again with a bunch of blind boxes, making the already delighted flower fella, who is munching onto the toad meat, even happier. After finally devouring the toad and making his belly full, he burps satisfyingly. While the lizard is practically rolling down the ground after stuffing itself, the flower fella, in a good mood, spots five chests with a single hunt. He decides to start opening them, beginning with the middle one. In his first attempt, he unveils a B-rank sweet potato gene. Now, as the dude gazes at the window to see where this stuff can be used, the system eagerly asks if he wants to fuse it. But it seems our dude is still clueless. After giving his profile a solid stare, he promptly asks the system about what this sweet potato thing even does. So, here's where the creepy doll chimes in, giving its unsolicited lecture. According to Mr. Creepy, burying leftover food in the soil to decompose into organic fertilizer is not only time-consuming but also an inefficient method. Instead, he suggests fusing the sweet potato gene, claiming it will quickly convert food into nutrients stored in the wood roots. Our dude, being his curious self, throws in a dumb question. What is the use of strong nutrients in wood roots? Why not just dig them up and roast sweet potatoes when he is feeling hungry? The mud doll immediately shuts down the roast and eat idea, stating that these nutrients can help him thrive in times of food, water, and mineral scarcity. Most importantly, it can act like healing magic, speeding up recovery from injuries. Our dude's ears perk up at the healing part. Who would not want some plant-based healing magic? With a pleasant twinkle in his eyes, he enthusiastically agrees for the fusion. So, the green aura starts shimmering around him, indicating some serious buffing up in progress. After this magical show, he looks around, slightly confused, wondering why there are not any visible changes. The creepy doll guides our dude on using his mind to control the roots and store the leftover frog. Now, the dude, all serious about his new skill, starts chanting repeatedly, I want to store food, I want to store food, I want to store food. And then, he starts feeling something happening, roots crawling out of the ground. In no time, the roots have snatched the toad entirely, taking it down into the ground. Our man is over the moon, realizing he can feel the roots wrapping around the food, swiftly breaking it down into wood roots to store nutrients. He finds it so convenient, no more digging holes, no worries about attracting other carnivorous animals when food is left uneaten. 
The creepy doll reveals that with a bit of effort, it will be as easy as moving its roots. It even suggests using the spare energy as a magical healing potion when needed, essentially providing an extra life. The doll further explains that it is currently just one tuber, but with a few more upgrades, it will be like having extra lives and stronger self-defense capabilities. In the following scene, there is this nasty snake, looking like it just stepped out of a horror movie, mouth wide open, ready to give a deadly bite to anyone dumb enough to mess with it. As it turns out, it is our dude trying to take this serpent down. He boldly shoves his flowery weapon, complete with thorns, right into the snake's gaping mouth. Before the poor serpent can even react, it is surrounded by a tangle of vines. He then seizes the moment and slam dunks the snake onto the ground. But hold up, flower power guy is not flying solo in this battle. His buddy joins the party, leaping into the air like a miniature superhero, armed with a bone that means business. Eyes shining with determination, he delivers a final, bone-crushing blow, leaving the snake in a state of utter defeat. As the dust settles, our dynamic duo stands victorious. They've literally kicked the bucket out of that venomous troublemaker. Our main man, still riding high on the adrenaline, showers praises on his little lizard psychic for learning from mistakes and hitting the snake right where it hurts. Now, he retracts his thorny vines, only to realize that the snake's poison is dripping all over them. But surprisingly, venomous bites do not faze him. But wait, there is more. His food pouch, quietly doing its thing in the background, starts to shimmer. Suddenly, healing magic takes center stage, working wonders on the damaged thorny vines, restoring them to their former glory. Who knew a simple pouch could be so magical? Now that the flowery dude and his trusty lizard sidekick have successfully turned the snake into their evening snack, they are all revved up for a feast. It's mealtime, baby. As they chow down on their serpentine banquet, the heavens decide to join the party, and rain starts to pour. Our dynamic duo does not mind. They are happily munching away while this creepy doll, armed with an umbrella, enjoys the rain, perched above a hovering golden chest. Not one to let a little rain dampen the parade, our hero gets creative. Gathering up his thorny vines, he fashions a makeshift roof over their heads. Why? Well, why not? Just a little extra effort to keep his yellow lizard buddy comfortable, who is still not satisfied after their snake feast. Now, with their vine roof in place, our dude is feeling all snug and cozy. Life's a breeze these days, eating, drinking, savings, and a reliable reptile companion for the tough times. What more could he ask for? But, here comes a curveball. The dude starts daydreaming, and not just any dream, he is picturing a life above his pay grade, with a girlfriend. The mere thought has him drooling like he has won the lottery. Suddenly, there is a shift in the atmosphere and something is up. The idiot senses a presence of a pair of lips that are moving toward him. But hold on to your lunch, because these lips belong to the system's built-in mud doll, and let us just say, it is so ugly that kissing a donkey's back seems like a preferable option. In a panic, he does not waste a second and smacks that ugly intruder right in the face with a cactus ball. However, reality hits him like a ton of bricks. Here he is, just a humble plant, and he starts contemplating the plant dating scene. Is there a tinder for Flora? He wonders if he should be looking for a female plant companion instead. Days pass in a blur, and in the blink of an eye, our chatty plant friend has grown quite a bit. A few plant struggles later, he now proudly boasts three vital roots and, most importantly, three life-saving blood vials. It's like plant puberty hit him with a growth spurt. Now, boredom creeps in. His yellow buddy is still out hunting, leaving our flowery protagonist twiddling his metaphorical thumbs. Then, out of nowhere, his eyes catch something behind him, and he hopes it is his friend returning. But, his eyes widen like he has seen a ghost, as the scene zooms out to reveal a towering figure above all the plants. It is a human. The flower dude is shook to his roots, realizing that actual humans exist in this world. Yet, a wave of happiness washes over him because he is a fellow sentient being. Excitement takes hold, and he starts calling out to the towering figure, desperately trying to grab his attention. It then occurred to him that he is just a big mouth. Creepy flower, not exactly the pinnacle of human resemblance. Regardless, he continues shouting, convinced that communication is the key to understanding this strange world and its inhabitants. After all, who needs a face when you have got a big mouth for conversation? Finally, the human's gaze descends to the ground, and it appears he has found what he was searching for. The scene zooms out to reveal the dude, now sitting on his feet, observing something closely. Meanwhile, our big-mouthed, flowery friend is utterly dumbfounded. After all that shouting, why is not this human paying any attention? He contemplates whether being smaller now has shrunk his voice as well. In a sudden twist, the human decides to uproot a nearby plant he was fixated on. As it turns out, the human was on a mission to find a specific plant, the antidote herb. On the flip side, our flowery protagonist is terrified beyond words, witnessing the audacity of this person casually plucking a plant like it is no big deal. Now, this guy's on a plant picking spree. He has got a smirk on his face as he grabs another herb, feeling pretty stoked to discover that there's this immortal flower, the key ingredient for whipping up the elixir of immortality. Meanwhile, our flowery friend is freaking out, beads of sweat forming because, surprise, he's actually a unique flower in the neighborhood. The poor guy's scared that Mr. Herb Collector might just pluck him for some DIY medicine. As the human tosses the herb into his bag with a satisfied grin, 
He scans the area for more herbal treasures. At this point, our dude's eyes are practically popping out, praying this plant-loving dude doesn't stumble upon him. So, this human dude finally spots our talkative flower buddy and gets all curious about it. However, he takes a moment to reflect. He is scratching his head, realizing he has never seen a flower quite like this before. Time to whip out the plant encyclopedia, his trusty book. He starts flipping through the pages, searching for any clues about our creepy, talking plant. Despite a thorough search, the book is as clueless as the dude. Undeterred, Mr. Human decides he is onto something big here. Maybe he has discovered a new, incredible plant. He gears up to pluck our little dude out of the ground for some serious research. Now, our flower is not having it, and Ward terrified does not even begin to cover it. In a desperate move, he whips out his thorny vines, giving the guy's hand a good poke. The human pulls back, surprised by the unexpected sting from this not-so-ordinary plant. Now he is even more curious to find out that this flower actually has so many thorns. So, he decides to play it safe, not wanting another prickly surprise. But whoa, out of nowhere, he hears this faint scream in the background. Now, let us peek into our little flower's brain for a sec. Picture this, there is a colossal giant, practically a devil in the eyes of our flowery friend, hovering above him. It hits him like a ton of petals, that sting he dished out is barely a blip on the human's radar. At this point, the little flower fella is legit shaking in his roots because, in the grand scheme of things, he is just a delicate bloom. Facing off against this human powerhouse, he is as vulnerable as a daisy in a storm. It's like a David versus Goliath scenario, only Goliath does not even notice David's slingshot. As the human dude is gearing up to pluck our little flowery hero, a wild turn of events unfolds. Suddenly, he hears screams behind him. The flower-picking enthusiast turns around, asking how this newcomer is back so soon. Out of the silhouette emerges a blonde guy, clutching an egg that is practically bigger than his mother is. The flower picker loses it, going all bonkers at the sight of this giant egg. He rushes toward the blonde guy, ecstatic that they have apparently got what they needed. But hold on, before they can sit down and swap stories, the blonde guy decides to pull a fast one and takes off running. The flower picking dude is left bewildered, scratching his head at the unexpected turn of events. Now, the blonde head fellow explains that he swiped the egg from a mother dragon, and guess what? She is on her way, not looking too happy about the egg napping situation. Now, both their faces are painted with shock and terror as the reality of an angry dragon mom heading their way sinks in. The giant beast appears in the sky, roaring ferociously. The blonde guy urges his buddy that it is time to make a run for it before they end up as a dragon snack. But wait, the flower picking dude insists on picking up this strange and creepy flower first. On the flip side, our talking flower is also losing his marbles because this flower picker guy is strangely persistent. Even in the face of imminent danger, he is still fixated on plucking our little flowery friend out. The blonde guy is on the same wavelength, utterly baffled by the flower picking dude's determination to pluck a plant in the face of a dragon induced death situation. Eventually, he decides to let go of the plant for now, after all, life takes priority, especially when there is a furious dragon mama on the horizon. He figures they can always come back later for some casual flower digging. But our talking flower is not having it. He's seething with anger, fired up at the mere thought of being plucked. He decides it is payback time. Out come the spiky thorns, and he is ready to make sure no human dares to set foot in this territory again. He lunges at the flower picker guy's leg, and, to the guy's shock, his leg is now tangled in a mess of thorny vines. Now, not only are they dealing with the looming threat of the dragon, but they have also managed to entangle themselves in a rooty mess. Thanks to the sheer force of the human struggle, our determined flower friend is getting uprooted from the ground. He is screaming in pain but refuses to let go of his mission to bring these intruders down. Finally, both the dudes take a nosedive onto the ground. To add to the chaos, the dragon's egg decides it has had enough drama for one day and rolls away into the bushes, attempting a sneaky escape. In the heat of the moment, the dragon catches them off guard, picking up speed and preparing to unleash its wrath. Surprisingly, the duo is back on their feet, with one suggesting that someone intentionally tripped them up. However, the blonde dude is in a panic, frantically searching for the missing egg. As they turn around, the flower picker guy is sweating bullets because the dragon is now mere feet away from them. Panic mode kicks in, and they sprint to outrun the approaching beast. Fate, however, has other plans. The dragon lunges at them with sharp claws, capturing both of these mischievous individuals in its grasp. The blonde guy struggles to break free, determined to escape the dragon's clutches. With a cocky grin, he unsheathes his sword, ready to take on the formidable flying foe. Swinging his sword around, blood splatters in all directions, and the dragon moans in pain and terror. Recoiling in agony, the dragon releases its grip on the two captives, leaving them falling through the air. Just when they thought the dragon was done, it turns out she is not ready to call it a day. Seething in anger, vines pop out at her forehead, and she lunges at the troublemakers once again, this time with even more fury. Back in our little flower's perspective, he hears the echoes of human voices, as if they are in the jaws of some ferocious beast. Amidst the settling dust, he wonders if those two troublemakers are done for. Sweating bullets and trembling in fear, our flower friend starts to panic, thinking he might have indirectly caused harm to those humans. 
he's torn between guilt for potentially causing their demise and fear that if they had escaped, they might have come back to dig him out for alchemical purposes. Trying to reassure himself, he convinces himself that he was just defending his own existence. But then, a crazy idea hits him, and his eyes widen in realization. He remembers the dragon egg is dangerously close to him, and with the mother dragon on a rampage, he fears that when she returns, she might unintentionally step on him. Bracing himself for the incoming dragon onslaught, our little flower dude mentally prepares for impact. The flick of Mama Dragon's colossal wings generates so much wind that our dude is practically doing a botanical limbo, almost getting plucked out of his place. But, surprisingly, the dragon decides to give their area a pass, not bothering to make a grand entrance. Our little flower is left utterly terrified, probably questioning his luck and thanking the horticultural gods for this unexpected mercy. Now, with the immediate threat gone, our flowery friend's attention snaps back to that dragon egg, just lying there, minding its own business. Feeling a burst of courage, he starts shouting at the dragon mama, asking her why she is abandoning her egg like yesterday's leftovers. He throws in a reminder about her kids still being around, as if trying to guilt trip the dragon into responsible parenting. He is there, swatting at himself, thinking this might be the first time the dragon turned into a mom and got a bit too carried away with the whole enemy slaying thing. No egg retrieval mission, just pure destruction vibes. Our flowery hero decides to step up, sending out his thorny vines toward the egg, making sure not to accidentally poke a hole in it. But before he can even reach the egg, his roots hit the brakes at full extension. Now, here comes the cute lizard fella, strolling back on two feet like he owns the place. He spots our flowery friend in the vine stretching act, and it is game on. The flowery dude starts hollering at the little yellow buddy, begging him to give the dragon egg a gentle push his way. The little fella takes up the challenge, but judging by the vines popping out all over him, it is pretty clear this is not a walk in the park, more like a struggling, tiny creature against a giant egg kind of situation. He does not give up, pushing that dragon egg like it is the MVP of eggs. We are three panels in, and he is still at it pushing it with all his might, major props to the tiny hero. Finally, after some serious pushing, the lizard takes a victory breath, letting its tongue hang out like it just won a marathon. Now, our flowery friend, witnessing the heroic efforts and the stress on the little fella, decides it is time to delegate. He instructs the exhausted lizard to go fetch some rocks and thicker branches. After a quick how to use a stick 101 lesson, the lizard is on a mission. Without questioning, he places a rock strategically, slides a thick stick underneath the egg, and starts pushing with all his lizard might. And guess what? It is a success. The egg starts to budge. But, in the grand scheme of victories, our poor lizard takes a tumble. Anyway, the dragon egg makes its way down toward our flower dude, and he seizes the opportunity, grabbing it with all his roots. But now, the real head scratcher begins. How the heck are they going to deal with this colossal dragon egg? Our flowery friend is not thrilled at the prospect of an egg so big he cannot even think about devouring it. To make matters worse, the idea of smashing it has him on edge. He's terrified that if he breaks it, the delicious dragon goodness will spill everywhere, rendering it inedible. Frustrated and throwing a full-blown tantrum, he contemplates swallowing it whole but quickly realizes that is not in the cards. To add to the stress, he is worried that this delectable dragon egg might attract other carnivores soon, and when it happened he knows he is royally fucked. He finds himself in a real pickle since absorbing the egg is off the table with his power pouches maxed out. Suddenly, a crackling sound grabs his attention, and he is all ears, or petals, rather. In sheer shock, his mouth hangs wide open as he realizes the egg is on the verge of hatching. His imagination runs wild, picturing what might emerge, maybe a baby dragon. Finally, the egg splits in half, and there is this radiant light, making it hard to see. Squinting, he tries to get a clearer view and is utterly surprised to find a baby girl with a tail and horns. What's even more amusing is that she is already decked out in some royal-looking attire, bringing a touch of divinity. Our guy is left dumbfounded, staring at the dragon egg turned baby girl. The shock is real, how did it hatch into a baby girl? He also notices the bellabin she is wearing, right after her dramatic entrance into the world. The newborn baby immediately starts crying her lungs out, and our dude, after a disappointed sigh, just rolls with the strange reality. I mean, if he can transform into a seven-foot-tall flower, then a crying dragon baby is not the weirdest thing. Curious, he takes a closer look and concludes that the horns on her head and the little tail are dragon traits. A baby dragon girl, no less. Out of the blue, the little lady grabs her own eggshell and starts munching on it. The guy, now sweating beads in stress, watches in disbelief as she chows down on something he finds quite inappropriate. Then, he recalls a snippet from his otaku life, where he read in some fantasy novels that baby dragons tend to eat their own eggshells. So, the lady, after devouring the entire shell, does not even let out a satisfying burp. But hold on, there is more of that shell right under where she is sitting. Seizing the moment, she starts pulling it out, only to find that it will not budge. Undeterred, she amps up the strength and continues her determined effort to extract the stubborn shell. The leftovers finally end up in her hand, but she takes a tumble in the process. Meanwhile, my man is just standing there, utterly dumbfounded by this nonsense unfolding before him. 
After polishing off the last bits of shell, she is on the lookout for more and locks eyes with our puzzled buddy. Without hesitation, she starts crawling toward him, calling him mommy. At this point, our flower fella is losing it, flailing around in search of answers to these unexpected questions. But our little lizard pal just stands there, offering no help. Then it hits him. He vaguely remembers something about birds imprinting on the first living thing they see as their mother. But he did not think of it for the baby dragons. Not to mention he is a dude. But the little lady could not care less about details. All she wants is a warm hug from someone she can call mommy. So, as she pushes with all her might, our poor flower friend starts to lose his grip on the ground. Now, he is practically crying his lungs out, begging for mercy from this unexpected torture. In a desperate attempt, he tells her to call him whatever she wants but to let go before she uproots him entirely. The dude is still sweating bullets, fearing he was about to be completely uprooted. However, a sigh of relief escapes him as the baby dragon seems to understand his plea. Suddenly, the lady notices the little lizard fella just chilling around, minding his own business. Without a second thought, she claims him as her father, grabbing him with all her might. Our flower guy's face is a mix of confusion and disbelief left wondering is this for real? What the heck is happening? He then starts scolding the little lady, lecturing her that she got it all wrong because he is supposed to be the dad, and the little yellow guy is just a lizard. The lady then starts to look around in confusion, while this little lizard fella is utterly terrified, sweating buckets. Finally she grabs the lizard again calling him puppy now, and the absurdity of the situation leaves this little lizard questioning the very fabric of reality. On the flip side, the flower dude is quite thrilled to see the lady changing her tone as soon as he claims to be the father. Figuring she must be clever, he decides to test her intelligence and asks her who he is. For a moment, the lady remains silent, pondering the question. Meanwhile, the little lizard's finally out of her grip, letting out a tired sigh. Because, you know, even lizards can get fed up with this stuff. Just then, the dragon lady turns to the flowery guy and announces that she is hungry, all while persistently calling him mommy. Suddenly, her attention is drawn to a plate full of tasty bugs. Without hesitation, she lunges at the plate, tossing those delectable bugs into her mouth one by one. Meanwhile, our flowery friend is fuming at the sight because, well, she is apparently munching on his food. In the blink of an eye, the once glorious bug buffet has vanished, leaving behind only the pristine surface of a tree leaf. The dragon lady, having feasted to her heart's content, decides it is time for a power nap and drifts off into dreamland, right before the mesmerized eyes of our dynamic duo. Our flower friend and lizard pal find themselves utterly enchanted by the sight of the little dragon peacefully snoozing. The flower guy even mentions that he is starting to feel like he has been thrust into daddy duty. As the sun takes a half-day siesta, our dragon princess awakens with a symphony of hungry cries. The flower and lizard, slightly puzzled but determined to be good caregivers, attempt to soothe her. In a move of parental genius, the flower dude assigns his lizard sidekick the important mission of fetching some scrumptious treats for the dragon baby. The lizard, unable to endure the heartbreaking wails of the little lady, dashes off like he is on a mission to save the world, or at least bring back some snacks. Because, let us be real, nobody can handle a hangry dragon baby. A while later, our heroic lizard sidekick returns, proudly presenting a platter of crawling little bugs. As both the flower guy and the lizard drool over the delectable sight, the little dragon lady dives into the feast as if it is the best day of her tiny life. However, despite devouring this banquet of tasty delights, she is still hungry. Her belly is growling and practically screaming. Give me more, you lazy bunch. The lady, undeterred by her previous feast, starts crying out loud again. Meanwhile, our puzzled flower head and his lizard sidekick are left utterly creeped out. She devoured all those bugs, yet here she is, bawling her eyes out and having the audacity to claim she is still hungry. With a sigh of disbelief, the little fella gets back to business, on a mission to find even more food for this seemingly insatiable little glutton. Half a month breezes by, and the first thing that catches our attention is a group of little insects. And there they are, our flower dude and his trusty lizard sidekick, engaging in a riveting daily bug feast. They gaze at their single insect like it is the last bug in the bug universe, contemplating life choices and wondering if bug cuisine is all it is cracked up to be. As they delicately savor their daily insect ration, they share a glance of shared exhaustion and silent camaraderie. The flower buddy breaks the bug-induced silence by asking his lizard companion if the bug hunting routine is taking a toll. The lizard's profound response. It's all for her. Cue the dramatic sighs and nods of understanding. Despite their insect-induced misery, the duo find solace in the fact that their sacrifices are all for the little dragon lady. It's the epitome of selfless parenthood, or as they like to call it, bughood. Now, as they witness their little dragon princess skillfully tossing bugs into her mouth like a culinary ninja, the flower head starts contemplating her true identity. Is she really a dragon and not a bird? In the quest to quench the dragon princess's bottomless appetite, our dynamic duo is in a panic. They're genuinely worried that they might turn into walking salads at this rate. The lizard buddy, usually the strong and silent type, surprises everyone by proposing a plan, baiting a big toad. It's like witnessing a lizard genius at work. The concerned flower, however, is not fully on board with this risky scheme. 
he's worried about his little lizard friend's safety. But the yellow creature, wearing a grin that screams I have got this, points enthusiastically at the cactus balls. Because, you know, cactus balls are the answer to all of life's problems. Off goes the yellow fellow, charging into the wilderness, searching for the mother of all toads. The flower guy, in a mix of concern and resignation, reminds him not to go too far. After all, who knows what kind of toad-sized trouble lurks out there. Left alone with the munching dragon princess, our flower friend contemplates the challenges of parenthood. He suddenly has a light bulb moment, realizing the hardships his own mother went through to raise him, a flower with a penchant for drama and now a dragon with a bottomless stomach. In a sudden turn of events, the little lizard fellow comes running back, beads of sweat dripping down, and the flower head is thrilled to see his return so soon. Little do they know, the scene is about to shift dramatically. This is where we see a giant bug wielding a pointy, sharp needle. But hold on, it is not just one bug, it is a whole horde of them, chasing down our little yellow friend, who is desperately trying to outrun these miniature airborne devils with his puny steps. Our flower buddy is losing his cool, entertaining the idea that this mischievous little motherfucker probably poked a hole in the hornet's nest with a cactus ball. Finally, the flower head takes a deep breath and prepares for the impending confrontation. He instructs his buddy to take their daughter and hide behind him, assuring them that hornet stings are useless against him. He's confident he can deal with them, thorns and all. With faith in his thorn vines, which he has been diligently upgrading for the past half month, he stands ready for the showdown. As the swarm of angry hornets approaches with their needle-like stingers, he also brandishes his collection of cactus balls, ready for a throwdown with these flying nuisances. With no time to waste, our flower friend unleashes a hailstorm of cactus balls, effortlessly taking down a few bees. As the scene zooms out, the ground is now a chaotic mess, littered with the fallen swarm of bees, showcasing his live catapult skills in action. Despite the dwindling numbers, these resilient bees are not backing down and are still heading his way. At this point, our dude has also exhausted his handy supply of cactus balls. But fear not, those balls were just the warm-up act for the main event. He starts flaunting his thorn-filled vines, preparing for his ultimate lightning whip move. Now, with this deadly attack, he has got everything covered. These bees do not stand a chance against his thorny wrath. He stretches his roots, yelling like there is no tomorrow, because, well, in his world, there might not be. After a spectacular display of thorny justice and a lot of screaming, our flower friend is tired but victorious. Surprisingly, the reckless antics of his little lizard companion have created a pile of defeated bees, a sight to behold. In the background, the dragon lady and the lizard dude are practically dancing in happiness. Why? Because their flower brother just scored a feast for them with his impromptu insect slaying performance. The little dragon lady is over the moon, ecstatic to see her dad saving the day. With a proud grin, our flower friend then commands his lizard psychic to get down to business, gathering those hornet bodies from afar. After all, with a haul of big hornets, they should have enough to feed their little girl for a few days. The enthusiastic little lady, eager to contribute, wants to join in the bee-picking festivities. And so, with teamwork and a sprinkle of bug-catching cheer, they amass a literal mountain of food ready to be devoured. As the trio settles down for their buffet, munching away with satisfied looks on their faces, they finally enjoy a satisfying meal after half a month of insect-filled adventures. But just as they are savoring the taste of victory, the creepy doll makes its appearance, surrounded by a bunch of floating blind boxes. As the creepy doll lurks in the background with its assortment of blind boxes, but our flowery friend is too busy playing the doting dad to notice. Now, he is stressing the importance of their little girl's growth, and he emphasizes the need for meat in her diet. So, the little lizard buddy takes on the toad-chasing task with gusto. Evading those giant toad tongues like a pro, he is practically giving them a lesson in lizard aerobics. In a moment of lizard theatrics, he turns around, hand gestures creating a metaphorical gun, and chirps bang. With that, the cactus ball starts raining down like a chaotic monsoon, turning the toad into a thorny pincushion. Now, the toad finds itself entangled in the thorn vines of our flower dude, and the more it struggles, the deeper the thorns pierce. As the toad struggles, the flower tightens his grip, and the toad's eyes pop out like it just witnessed the greatest magic trick ever. The ensuing blood splatter could give abstract art a run for its money. With a lifeless toad hanging in the air, he tosses it to the ground with a thudding noise. With a grin that could light up a garden, our flower friend proudly announces the menu upgrade to his daughter. No more bug buffets, it is meat time, baby. And he is secretly flexing those upgraded vines, not just for show anymore, but for some serious toad-smashing action. Because in this garden of chaos and critters, it is always good to be prepared for the unexpected. So, the dynamic duo starts slicing up the frog like a pair of pro butchers. They generously toss meaty chunks in the lady's direction, who is practically doing a happy dance at the thought of devouring it all. As the days go by, our little yellow friend cleverly lures predators into the flower head's territory every day, using himself as the bait. Then, the flower head preys on them like a floral ninja. But, the flower head's got concerns. The little lizard is always living on the edge, doing a constant dance of life and death. He genuinely worried and afraid that one day the lizard might become a predator's gourmet meal. And let us not forget the baby girl, she is sprouting up like a bamboo shoot. 
In just a month, she is transformed into what looks like a five-year-old, and her appetite is on steroids. The small critters are no match for her growling belly. Now, they are at that stage where they need to level up and snag some bigger animals. The flower head's a bit jittery, because if it is a mountain cat or a hyena, he is not exactly flexing with confidence. Strength issues you know. So, one day, he is clutching onto this colossal toad, and his little lizard sidekick is all set to turn it into bite-sized chunks. The flower head, holding the frog, gets asked the million-dollar question by the little lizard, are they not going to eat it? At this point, the genius tosses the frog to the ground and spills the beans on his master plan. He's thinking of using this frog as bait to lure in some other unsuspecting prey. As we take a closer look at the frog, it is not exactly having a spa day. It is still alive, but not really vibing with its senses. And behold, there is an audience for this whole frog hunting extravaganza. Judging by their intense, blazing eyes, it is another ferocious monster. As this creature steps out of the shadows, we are greeted with the sight of a giant rat with claws that could rival wolverines, and this fella is all in for that froggy feast. So, without a second thought, the rat lunges and takes a good old taste of the frog. Munching away happily, the rat suddenly senses that something's off. Without hesitation, the flowery dude goes into action, whipping out his thorny vines. The rat startled, facing an unexpected, sneaky attack. Despite its best efforts and a sweaty rat face, the little critter succumbs to the root's embrace. The struggle continues, but it is a futile battle. The flowery head, with a swift move, launches the rat into the air. A thunderous crash echoes as the rat meets the ground. Now, they have got not one but two meaty feasts to chow down on. Just like that, they hit the jackpot with two prey in one go today. Besides their little girl, the dynamic brother duo is in for a satisfying meal. Hold on, it seems unexpected danger is about to crash their party, and these pro hunter folks are about to shit their pants. Taking a closer look at the sky, there is an eagle heading their way. Its eyes are not just set on two or three, but a whopping five juicy delights on the ground. In the blink of an eye, the eagle swoops down, snatches the rat with its razor-sharp claws, and gracefully takes to the sky with its mouthful of tasty self-hunted delight. Now, the flower dude is going downright furious, watching his delicious feast slipping away just before reaching his taste buds. He channels his inner hulk, preparing his thorny vines and hurling down cactus balls like it is the plant Olympics. The eagle, on the other hand, is practically having a stand-up comedy moment, laughing and ridiculing these puny adversaries attempting their best circus act. It's a bird brain comedy, to say the least. His frustration level hits a new high. That motherfucker eagle is just way too high up in the air for a cactus attack to land. Now, the little lady decides she had enough and goes all angry birds on the eagle out of nowhere. But the concerned daddy tries to play the peacekeeper, attempting to calm down his fiery little one. At this very moment, he witnesses something out of this world that leaves him entirely speechless. A light starts shimmering around her, as if she is some dragon deity, or whatever. Her entire appearance is now covered in this shiny, bright light, making it really hard to see what the heck is going on. I squint my eyes so the viewers do not have to, only to realize she has transformed into a full-fledged divine little dragon. Now, both the lizard and the flower head are losing their botanical minds at this sudden transformation. Their mouths are left agape, like she just turned into the spitting image of the giant dragon that scared the bejesus out of humans before. Now, the little dragon has traded delicate human feet for some fierce dragon claws, and her whole appearance has dragon upgraded with a snazzy pair of wings. Hold on, it seems there is something off. As she attempts to take flight, she ends up doing a nosedive straight into the ground. The dynamic duo is left dumbfounded at the sight. But hey, it is her first time flying, not everyone nails it on the maiden voyage, right? The flower head, quick on his metaphorical feet, instructs the lizard to check if their little fire starter is not injured. Now, the little dragon lady has turned back into a little girl, crying her eyes out after the tumble. The dumbfounded flower is caught off guard, witnessing the waterworks. He's momentarily stunned, contemplating whether to offer a tissue or summon a flock of sympathetic butterflies. Attempting to calm her down, he reassures her, hey, do not cry, daddy's got this, a little flower power will fix you right up. In a light bulb moment, he realizes that their transformed little girl resembles something out of the classic of mountains and seas, a bit like the mythical Ying Long. As she is growing, he figures it is time to ditch the generic little girl title and settle on a name. Voila, Ying Yun it is. Now, back to the main agenda, the flower brain starts pondering on the dilemma. She needs more practice flying, but how on earth does a big mouth flower like him teach someone the finesse of soaring through the skies? First things first, he introduces the little lady to her new name because, after all, he just cannot keep calling her little girl. While she is rolling around with her new appearance, she nods in affirmation because, let us face it, Ying Yun sounds pretty darn nice. Then, in a classic big mouth flower move, he decides to conjure up some roots. He instructs her to perch on the top of his hand because, starting today, daddy's going to be her flying assistant. The first lesson, flapping those wings and staying stable in the air, the little trembling lady gets straight to business, positioning herself above his metaphorical hand. And then, with a flourish, he launches her into the air, soaring through the sky. Now, she is feeling a mix of terror and exhilaration, 
but she is going strong, cruising through the skies. On the other hand, the flower fella is doing his best to be a motivational coach, encouraging her, you're doing great. Don't be scared. Keep those eyes ahead. At this pivotal moment, the dude's mind flashes back to the days when his mother taught him to ride a bicycle, whispering in his ear to keep the handlebars steady and not to fear, always looking ahead. Now, he finally gets the struggles his mom faced back then. But alas, time travel is not in his botanical skill set. Suddenly, the lady starts a descent back to the ground and crash lands into the bushes, leaving leaves fluttering in her wake. The terrified lizard scampers towards the bushes, ready to check on their daughter's leafy well-being. Amidst his screams of concern, hiss and murmur voices emerge from the bushes, making the dude wonder if there is a secret snake convention going on. Finally, she emerges from the foliage, a snake dangling from her mouth. She might be a bit bruised up, but hey, she is casual snacking on a snake like it is a stroll in the park. Now, she is sprinting back to her father like it is just another day in the park. With a snake hanging from her mouth, she reassures her concerned father not to worry because she remembers his teachings about biting the vital points of snakes directly. The duo stands there, staring at each other, dumbfounded. Their little yin-yang has grown up a lot, now casually catching snakes on her own. As several days pass by, the first thing you know, the lady is soaring into the skies like it is no big deal. The two dummies on the ground are experiencing the happiness of a lifetime, watching their daughter effortlessly glide through the air. She is so graceful and agile that even the big, rooted flower guy cannot help but wish he could fly too. While she is soaring higher and higher, the flower fella, in a panic, yells for her to not fly too far and beckons her to come back. But before they can do anything, she has already disappeared from the sky. Now, both fools are left lost in wondering what to do. She has finally flown away, leaving them grounded in confusion. Five agonizing minutes tick by, and there is still no sign of her in the sky. The flower dude, in a fit of parental panic, entertains the idea that maybe she decided to take a deeter to find her biological mother. Now, 15 excruciating minutes have passed. The dudes are in full-on terror mode, convinced that she is flowing away to her biological mother. The anxiety is real. Suddenly, a glimmer of hope appears in the sky, and the two dummies are over the moon, cheering for her return. But hold your flower petals. A wave of creepiness washes over the flower head's face. Now, we shift our gaze to the eagle, sweating bullets like it is a sauna. And guess who is hot on its tail? Yep, it is her, possibly chasing down that eagle who thought it could snatch their sweet rat off their plates. The dragon buddy is in hot pursuit, ready to reclaim what is rightfully theirs. Now, the flower buddy is laughing out loud, finally seeing the lady coming back. Turns out, the little girl just went to settle some scores with that eagle. Finally, the eagle, realizing it is in over its head, and starts mentally drafting its resignation letter from the Bird of Prey Union. Meanwhile, the flower is doing a victory dance, mentally thanking every gardening tutorial he has ever watched for this moment. Now, it is his time to shine. He prepares himself, ready to unleash his newfound move, and it's the ultimate move he just learned. With a dramatic flare, he releases a multitude of cactus balls, naming this ultimate move Cactus Missile. These darn cactus balls hit the eagle directly, leaving it groaning in pain with feathers scattered like confetti. The dragon's claws finally reach the sweating eagle's head. Now, the little girl looks like a giant behemoth against the terrified eagle, which is now just a panicking chicken. The eagle, in a last-ditch effort, decides to play dirty and pinches the dragon lady's foot. As the lady groans in pain, the eagle, sensing its window of escape, attempts to make a quick exit. But its escape is painfully interrupted when a cactus ball directly hits between the wings, leaving the eagle falling down like a failed engine airplane. Now, those thorny vines are making their way toward the eagle, ready to give it the not-so-gentle touch of floral justice. Sure enough, the eagle, finally free from the dragon's mouth, falls into the waiting embrace of those thorns. With all his flowery might, the plant protagonist shows no mercy, ruthlessly slamming the eagle into the ground. All that is left in his wake is debris and dust. As the dust settles, we are left with the aftermath. The eagle has officially kicked the buckets, looking like it went through a horror action movie blood splattered special. On the other hand, the dragon girl has finally landed and proudly fills in her father, Hey, dad, I can hunt now too. The dad, bursting with pride, gives her a pat of her life and a thumbs up for all the effort she has put in. Who knew parenting a dragon could be this rewarding? Now, the trio, all pumped up with the thrill of victory, is ready to munch on this eagle. In the blink of an eye, another month zooms by, and there is the flower dude, fully startled to find a snake before him. But surprisingly, it is the little dragon girl proudly presenting the snake she hunted. Time has done its magic, and she is now rocking the appearance of a ten-year-old child. However, she seems to prefer the dragon form these days. No more risking the little lizard's life to become bait, she has got her hunting game on point. The duo is feeling so cozy and happy that the word happy does not even begin to describe their euphoria. Together, they munch and feast like a family that just discovered the joy of non-bug-based cuisine. Meet freedom at its finest. Now, with a wholehearted gesture, the daddy flower gives the best and biggest chunk to his dragon daughter. But, being the caring little dragon she is, she insists her father consumes it himself. 
he assures her that he is now full, and it playfully teases her about having room to grow. She is growing day by day, and just eating big toads, rats, snakes, or small birds is not enough to fill her up anymore. Now, she has graduated to hunting even bigger prey all by herself. The first time she presents this massive beast right in front of our flower fella after a hunt, he goes into full panic mode. He's wondering if it is a lynx, bombarding her with questions about how she managed to catch such a colossal prey, and making sure she is not hurt. The charming lady, flexing her dragon muscles, assures her father that she is perfectly fine and there is nothing to worry about. It's just dinner time. The next day rolls around, and she has managed to snag an even bigger monster, leaving the flower dude utterly dumbfounded once again. This time, she proudly presents a hyena. The concerned flower, being his worrywart self, once again reminds her not to mingle with those bigger creatures. Especially hyenas, they are social animals and exceptionally cunning, making them a real danger. Despite being hurt in the leg, she reassures her father, stating that she trusts his teachings and has been following everything. She emphasizes that she only attacked the hyena when it was alone, sticking to the strategies he taught her. The flower fella, however, starts sweating buckets at the sight of his daughter injured. His overactive worrywart mode is on high alert. She tries to reassure him once again, explaining that it is just a minor injury. The hyena caught her leg and scratched it with its paw, but it is nothing major. Still, he cannot help but stress, especially seeing her bleeding. Now, he is seriously stressing every time she goes hunting, especially with her dramatic sky drop strategy. While the creature is not dead, there is always a possibility she could get hurt. In a thoughtful moment, he flashes back to when his mom nursed his injuries. He remembers the time he tried jumping from the flower bed, and his mom scolded him, emphasizing the danger. He argued that every kid was trying to jump, so he did too. She gave him a valuable lesson, telling him to prioritize protecting himself. Demonstrating with grace, she advised him to bend his legs when jumping, keeping the body's center of gravity downward. She even told him to imagine himself as a spring, maintaining elasticity to avoid falling when jumping down. Back in the present, the healing magic kicks in, and within a blink of an eye, her leg is fully healed as if nothing had happened. The dude is undoubtedly fascinated by her rapid healing ability. Still, he is determined to teach her some hunting methods to ensure her safety, just like his mom taught him when he was young. However, reality strikes, and he realizes that, well, he is just a flower, a creepy one at that and teaching her anything about hunting might be a bit out of his botanical expertise. Then, like a wild and crazy plan sprouting in his flowery brain, he figures out a solution. It dawns on him that the safest method for an aerial attack is to throw projectiles at the opponents from the sky. Immediately, he tells his daughter to gather some stones. Meanwhile, the lizard, standing there looking casual, is just wondering what in the botanical world is going on. Then, he instructs the little lizard fellow to use those broken bones of his to draw an X symbol on the open space, making it as big as possible. The lizard, without a doubt, follows the instructions and gets to the business of drawing a giant X. In a sudden burst of urgency, the flower hollers at him to quickly leave the area. Now, seizing the opportunity, the dragon lady grabs a stone. With the flower dude calculating the perfect moment, he tells her to dives down and throws the stone towards the X. So, she follows the instructions, and at the right time, she gracefully leaves the grasp of the stone. The stone comes plummeting down, hitting the ground with a thudding noise. When she looks down, she realizes her hit was way off the mark. But her cheering father, undeterred, tells her not to be disheartened because, after all, it is her first projectile throw, which is already pretty good. He further encourages her to practice, starting with hitting fixed targets. As long as she keeps working hard, he assures her that she will definitely become a sharpshooter who hits the mark every time. And we find a bunch of creatures just hanging out, probably discussing the latest gossip in the animal kingdom. One of them is so bored, he is practically yawning his head off, waiting for something exciting to happen. But then, his eyes witness something extraordinary happening that sets off all the alarms in his mind. Unfortunately for one unlucky fellow, it is a literal rock concert, and he is in the front row, taking a direct hit. And, of course, the next thing we know is a splash of blood. The poor creature has now kicked the bucket, all thanks to this giant boulder. Here comes the dragon lady, ready to grab the dead guy. After grabbing it, she goes back into the sky, feeling quite happy about her achievement. This method is really effective, and using it for sneak attacks means no need to worry about alerting other hyenas. Suddenly, her eyes land on something peculiar while drifting in the sky. The scene shifts, revealing the skulls and bones of two humans casually chilling around, with their belongings still there, one sword and one bag. The sword immediately catches her attention. At this moment, the dragon lady remembers that her daddy always plays with that broken arrow. So, she decides to pick up the sword, thinking it would be a good replacement. She swings down to the ground to pick the sword up. Back at home, she throws the creature onto the ground. Now, the duo is quite impressed to see that she landed a direct hit on this creature. Three months in, and she is not just growing fast, she is growing into a dragon-sized boss. But out of the blue, a miracle decides to join the party, and this mysterious yellow energy starts radiating out of her. Turns out, the lady is leveling up, 
and the dude is caught off guard, probably more than a cat seeing a cucumber for the first time. Fast forward, she transforms into her human form, already towering, drop dead gorgeous, and a walking definition of tall, beautiful, and sexy. With a grin so wide it could give the Cheshire cat a run for its money, she lunges at her father. She grabs him tightly, showering him with credit for teaching her methods so effective. They are like life hacks for the soul. Meanwhile, the poor dude is feeling embarrassed, squished into her chest like he is stuck in a particularly awkward elevator ride. But this quirky flower is having a moment, relishing the fact that he has never been this close to a girl, let alone touched one. Talk about a virgin loser in bloom. Reality check hits him like a bullet, and his eyes widen in despair. It dawns on him that she is his daughter, and he wonders why his brain decided to take a detour into creepy town. Snap back to a semi-normal universe, he gets all riled up and starts giving her the cold shoulder. He lays down the law, telling her she is a young lady now and cannot just hug her daddy like they are in a sitcom. Innocently, she asks, what's the problem, though? He goes on a spiel, explaining that as daughters grow up, they are supposed to avoid their fathers, and as sons grow up, they steer clear of their mothers. It's like an unwritten rule, apparently. Now, she is on the verge of tears, asking why the daddy's going all fierce on her. She insists she has not done anything wrong and spills the beans that she even brought back a gift for her dear old dad, just to sprinkle some happiness in his life. He quickly reassures her, telling her to ditch the waterworks and swiftly changes the topic. With an eager grin, he jumps to the question of what surprise she has got for her dear old dad. She beams and spills the beans, a big sword she stashed in the bushes for that element of surprise. The ding-dong responds with a take it as long as it is from my sweetie and extends his roots to grab the sword. However, reality kicks in, and as he attempts to lift it, the sword seems to have enrolled in a heavyweight championship, giving him a good workout. After a struggle, he manages to unveil the massive sword, and he is both creeped out and fascinated. Meanwhile, a little lizard is sprinting for its life, fearing the accidental sword toss. It dawns on him that this sword belongs to those two pesky humans who swiped the egg and tried to pull a fast one on the dragon. Curiosity peaked, he inquires about where she found it and if there is anything else in the mix. She spills the beans, revealing two human skeletons at the foot of that mountain. Alongside the sword, there are two backpacks, a dagger, and probably a partridge in a pear tree. She pops the question, asking if her dear old dad wants these items too. So, with a mental nod, he gives her the green light to fetch the shovel and the dagger, dismissing the rest as not worth their time. The lady promptly agrees, promising to bring them back after her hunting escapade tomorrow. Now, he is back on the guilt trip express, acknowledging that those two humans are definitely on his kill count. Yet, a niggling thought remains, if this flowery cap had not intervened, those troublemakers might have slipped away. That, he reckons, could have turned out pretty bad for him. Reflecting on the stolen dragon egg and the potential peril the little dragon lady might have faced, either ending up as dragon munchies or enslaved by humans post-hatching, he starts justifying his actions. In his flowery logic, he convinces himself that he was not wrong, just playing a hand in the grand scheme of dragon justice. After swinging the sword a few times, he is panting like he just ran a marathon because, let us face it, this sword is even bigger than his mother. Despite using both of his vines, he is struggling. It is a workout and a half. Reflecting on the last time he casually pulled a human leg which is a simpler operation, he thought and almost broke his veins. So, he decides it is time to hit the metaphorical gym and strengthen those vines. He's dead set on swinging the sword with just one vine, a new level of plant fitness. While he is busy wrestling with the gigantic sword, the lizard fella and the dragon lady are chilling, munching on tasty meat. They extend a dinner invitation, but he is on a training mission and declines, saying he has gotta get ripped first. Now, he is back in action, swinging the sword like a plant samurai, and effortlessly cuts through a creature with just one swing. The lizard fella and the dragon lady are ecstatic, cheering and over the moon to witness this flower head slicing through creatures like they are cucumbers in a salad. To celebrate today's buffet, he starts breaking down the creature into bite-sized meaty pieces. After enough swordplay shenanigans, he decides to stash the massive weapon away from prying eyes, saving it as a trump card, especially for any humans or large adversaries that might pop up. Finally, the long-lost creepy mother lover enters the scene, and this time he is not alone, he is lugging around a bunch of treasure boxes. After the feast, the dude declares it is arithmetic time and instructs everyone to choose a number from 1 to 5 and shout it out like they are in a bizarre bingo game. Dragon Lady, oblivious to the reward system, wonders why her daddy always turns into a math wizard after a meal. Not to mention, he either looks elated or disappointed, arguing with the air. Despite the confusion, she throws on a happy smile, deciding it does not matter as long as this flowery character is content. The little lizard chirps too, and the lady goes for box 5. And so, the creepy doll gets down to business, opening the respective number boxes. It's been quite the adventure with our quirky cast of characters, but fear not, there is more to come. As soon as the next chapters of this man would drop, you can bet that I will be here to cover them all. Keep those eyeballs peeled for the next installment, where we uncover what surprises the creepy doll has in store for our flowery friend. Until next time.